He could now see a white inmate in the cell bent over with a blonde wig on his head while getting his cheeks clapped out by a big muscular black guy. Charlie was jailed for 36 years in prison. During his entire court case he consistently laughed in the courtroom while making funny faces at the judge. The judge told Charlie many times to stop messing around in the courtroom but Charlie just didn't listen. He didn't care what the judge had to say and wouldn't listen to anyone. He didn't even listen to the advice of his own legal team when they told him to be silent in the courtroom or when they told him messing around like this would have severe consequences when it came to sentencing. His own parents couldn't even say anything to him. They were both seated in the courtroom but instead of getting up and telling him to behave they both just sat there with their heads in their hands totally embarrassed and unable to say or do anything to him. I think deep down they knew if they even tried to say anything to him he wouldn't even listen to them. The last time Charlie's father tried to discipline him it didn't end well. Charlie ended up grabbing his father by his shirt with his left hand while slapping him multiple times with his right hand. He only stopped slapping his father when his right hand started to hurt due to the amount of slaps he was giving him. Charlie now had a sinister look on his face and could see the fear in his father's eyes. His father now realized he was just too weak to discipline Charlie anymore. His father just stood there in total shock with his hands on his face which had now turned red from the amount of slaps he took. His father was now petrified of Charlie and just accepted defeat because he didn't want to get slapped again so from that moment going forward he never tried to discipline Charlie again. Throughout the entire trial the judge made a note every time Charlie messed around in the courtroom so when the day of sentencing arrived the judge couldn't wait for it to happen. On sentencing day the judge walked into the courtroom with a massive smile on his face. His smile was so big it looked just like a Cheshire cat's smile. As the day progressed Charlie noticed something very different about the judge. He noticed the judge just couldn't stop smiling. The judge normally looked miserable and upset but today he was happy and on cloud nine. Charlie thought to himself, this judge can't do anything to me, I'm white and I'm from a rich family so he will have no choice but to just let me go. Charlie's luck was about to run out because the judge was now ready to read his sentence. Before reading his sentence the judge said to Charlie you have shown no remorse whatsoever for your brutal crimes and also shown utter disrespect to both me and everyone else who has always sat patiently every time they have come to court. Throughout this court case I have tolerated your terrible behavior but I won't tolerate it today. Today is the day that justice is served. Today will be the first day of the rest of your life. Your crimes were so horrific I nearly vomited when I looked at the pictures of your victims. Your case has been one of the worst cases I have ever come across in my 30 years of being a judge so without further ado I'm sentencing you to 36 years in prison and at that moment everything changed. Charlie's jokes and smiles suddenly stopped with his face now filled with sadness and worry. For the first time in Charlie's life everything suddenly got real. He finally realized his court case was no joke, but it was too late because he was now being sent to prison. Deep down Charlie knew he was no tough guy and couldn't last a day in prison so he did the unexpected. He got on his hands and knees in the courtroom begging the judge to not send him to prison. 
He begged the judge to restart the court case only this time he would keep quiet and pay attention. The judge started laughing and then looked at Charlie with a massive smile on his face while saying, Your court case is over and you didn't take it seriously so that is your problem. Now guards remove this filthy animal from my courtroom and then out of nowhere two big black guards grabbed Charlie and pulled him out of his seat while slamming him face first into the ground. They handcuffed him and then picked him up off the floor. Charlie's face was now bruised while tears fell from his eyes as he was led out of the courtroom. As he was walking out he shouted at the judge saying, you can't send me to prison. I am white so let me go. Please just let me go or you will be sorry. Mom help me. They are taking me to prison. Help me. The judge then started laughing as reality finally hit Charlie like a bag of bricks. He would now have to spend the next 36 years in prison. While being transported to prison Charlie had time to reflect on his crimes. He now felt like an idiot for even doing them. He was raised in a good home but refused to go on a straight and narrow path in life. He resorted to committing crimes just to impress the girl of his dreams. Her name was Kimberly and she was so beautiful. Her ex-boyfriend was recently jailed for dealing to an undercover police officer. She didn't want to wait for him so she broke up with him while he was in prison making her single and free to mingle. She was the girl next door who all the guys loved including Charlie. She had long blonde hair, a stunning body nice blue eyes with an amazing smile but there was just one major problem with Kimberly. She only dated bad boys but at that time Charlie was a nice guy who always brought girls flowers, chocolates and was always a gentleman. The girls all laughed at him. They rejected him every time while saying he was weird because he was just too nice. Charlie's body was now filled with anger and rage. He then said to himself, No longer will I be a doormat for women to just walk all over me. The Mr. Nice Guy era is now over and from that day moving forward Charlie turned into a savage and a savage is what he became. He started committing crimes while filming the entire incident. He would send the clips to his friends who would then post them on social media. Charlie's reputation on the streets began to grow at an exponential rate. He quickly became a respected guy in the streets who would do anything to build his street reputation. One day he saw Kimberly while she was walking home. So he thought to himself, this is my perfect chance to approach my one true love. I now have the street reputation that she wants and will now be able to make her my girlfriend. He was so happy to finally see Kimberly but things just didn't go as planned. When he tried to talk to Kimberly he noticed that she was scared of him. She was looking around to see if she could find a way to escape. She then said to Charlie I know who you are and I know what you are going to do. Charlie then said how do you know because I haven't told anyone about you. Kimberly then replied saying I've seen all of your videos on social media. Everyone knows what you do to people so let's just get this over with so I can go home. She then reached into her handbag and handed Charlie her purse and mobile phone while saying, There's 200 in my purse for you to keep so that should be enough for you. Please just take it and leave but don't harm me like you did to your other victims. Charlie started laughing while saying you think I'm here to rob you. Kimberly then said yes, you are here to rob me. This is what you do. I've also seen what you do to people who put up a fight and refuse to hand it over. I don't want any trouble so just take it. 
Charlie then said to Kimberly, I wouldn't even rob you if you had all the money in the world on you. I approached you because I love you and would like you to be my girlfriend. I only started doing crime to impress you. I did it all for you. Kimberly now started to get even more freaked out while looking around for more ways to escape from Charlie but there was no way to escape so she just got the courage and told him the truth. She then said to Charlie you are a nice guy but I think you are just a little too street for me. I like bad boys but you are just a little bit too bad for me and that's when Charlie snapped and got angry. He then shouted at Kimberly saying I did this all for you baby and this is what I get in return. You were supposed to love me for the bad boy I have become. Me and you were supposed to get married and start a family together. You were my happily ever after. You have hurt me Kimberly. You have hurt me real bad and now you must pay. If I can't have you then nobody else can have you and that's when it happened. Charlie snapped and Kimberly was no more. Later on that day Charlie went on a rampage of violence adding more victims to his list but was later arrested while walking home. The police took him to the station for questioning but later released him on bail because his father hired the best legal team in the country. After Charlie received his 36-year sentence he was loaded onto the truck and sent straight to prison. While on the truck Charlie thought to himself, why did I do this? I wasted my entire life for a woman that didn't even love me and now she's all gone. I shouldn't have did that to her. I should have just walked away and found a woman who really loves me but now it's too late and my life is now over. For the rest of the journey Charlie sat there in silence while feeling sorry for himself. Once he reached the prison he was escorted out of the truck and put through the registration process. Part of the process involves bending over and spreading your cheeks so a prison officer can check to see if you have anything hidden inside of you. Charlie watched the guy in front of him bend over and spread his cheeks but also noticed the prison officer was actually enjoying what he was looking at. The officer was licking his lips as he looked at the guy bent over with his cheeks spread wide open. Charlie could see the look on the officer's face and didn't like it at all. It was the same look that a man gives a woman when he likes her. After the guy in front was finished it was now Charlie's turn to bend over and spread his cheeks for the officer but he refused. He then said to the prison officer I'm not bending over and spreading my cheeks for anyone because that's gay. I'm not going to bend over and spread my cheeks so you can look at me the way you just looked at that other guy while licking your lips. Forget that. The prison officer then laughed while saying to Charlie you will listen to me woman. You will let me see your cheeks or I will put your hands behind your back and handcuff you. I'll then take you into that back room, over there and slap you. I'll then call 10 other prison officers over and we will all run a train on you. Charlie was mortified by what the prison officer just said to him. He never expected a prison officer to say anything like that to an inmate. Not wanting to upset the officer or get a train ran on him Charlie just listened to the prison officer's orders and bent over. He then opened his cheeks out so the prison officer could look. After the officer was finished looking he then said to Charlie, you have nice cheeks. I can tell they are untouched but don't worry woman because they won't be untouched for much longer. Charlie didn't have a clue what the officer was talking about. He was also freaked out by the officer's remarks so he quickly pulled his pants up and walked off while wondering, why did that officer just call me a woman? Can't he see this is an all men's prison so there are no women here? 
that officer is stupid. Another prison officer then came and escorted Charlie to his new wing. Once Charlie arrived in his cell he was really happy to find out that he didn't have to share a cell with any other inmates. Once Charlie was all settled in his new cell it was now time for social activities. As he walked up and down the wing he noticed something very strange about this wing. He noticed half of the prison cells were already open with no prisoners inside of them. He knew prisoners were housed in those cells because he could see their stuff inside of the cells. He knew there were inmates inside of all the cells that were locked because he could hear the beds squeaking inside of those cells. He could hear prisoners saying things like, No please stop. I don't want to do this. He could also hear other prisoners saying things like shut up women and just do it. Take it. Take it woman. He then walked up the wing and could hear other inmates in their cells screaming for their life. While still not 100% sure what was going on Charlie walked up to the cell door that was locked and opened the door flap to see what was going on. He was now lost for words because he couldn't unsee what he had just seen. He could now see a white inmate in the cell bent over with a blonde wig on his head while getting his cheeks clapped out by a big muscular black guy. Charlie was now traumatized by what he just saw in that cell so he quickly closed the cell door flap and ran off. He thought to himself I'm lucky that big black guy didn't see me looking at him. Charlie really wanted to help the inmate in that cell because he could tell he didn't want to do it so he ran to the prison officer's office while shouting emergency. I need you two to come with me right now because an inmate needs your help. The two prison officers didn't even move a muscle as they sat on their chairs with their feet on the table while watching movies on their phones and eating popcorn. Charlie shouted again saying please come with me right away officers and I will show you the cell. An inmate is inside of that cell bent over while another inmate is blowing his back out. I could see the inmate had tears falling down his face and didn't want to do it. I could see he was in real pain. The two prison officers both just looked at each other and then started laughing while saying, Don't you know what happens in prison? You really are a newbie aren't you? That's okay because you have 36 more years to familiarize yourself with the prison ecosystem. Charlie then said to the prison officers, Are you not going to help the men in trouble? The officers then replied saying first of all women you better take that bass out of your voice and watch who you are talking to before we lock this prison office door. We'll then pin you down on that table over there and push our things inside of you. We will take it in turns to turn you out and we will do it all night long. Second of all, since you want to be a superhero and help the inmate who is in the cell getting his cheeks clapped out, I'll walk you to his cell right now. I'll then open the door and throw you into his cell so you can be a hero and help the inmate who is in trouble. The prison officer then said we can't help him because we are in the middle of watching a movie so we will send you to the rescue. Charlie couldn't believe what he was hearing from the prison officers but also didn't want to get turned out himself. He realized that there was nothing he could do to save the men from getting turned out in their cells so he just said this to the officers. Sorry I made a mistake. I didn't hear or see anything in any of the prison cells. Please just go back to watching your movies and I won't bother you again. The prison officers both looked at each other and then started smiling while saying, that's what we like to hear. They then said to Charlie, since you are bored why don't you go and check out the auction? 
It's down that corridor on your right. It's the only red door in this entire wing so you won't miss it. It will also give you a chance to see how we do things on the auction wing. Charlie then said I didn't even know this wing was called the auction wing so thanks for telling me. I will take your advice and walk to the auction now to check it out. Charlie then left the prison officer's office and walked to the auction entrance. It was a red door just like the prison officer said it was. Charlie could hear crowds of people behind the door cheering in the auction. It was almost like some sort of concert was going on. As he looked at the door he started to think to himself, what could possibly be behind this door and what is this whole auction thing about? Maybe the auction is a place where inmates go to swap and sell their old electronical goods with each other. Yeah that's it, that's what it is. Charlie then grabbed the door handle and opened it. He could now see inside the auction and it was like nothing he had ever seen before. What he saw inside that room would give anyone nightmares for the rest of their life. After opening the auction door, he looked around and could see he was at the back of the room. There was also a stage which was at the front of the room. The room was huge and it was packed with inmates who were all standing facing the stage with their backs facing Charlie. The inmates were so focused on the stage that none of them even noticed that Charlie had opened the door and walked into the auction. There were so many inmates in the room that Charlie could just about get inside. The worst part about the auction was what Charlie saw on stage. What he saw on stage would give a grown man nightmares for the rest of his life. It would make anyone think twice about wanting to go to prison. He saw what looked like 10 white women on stage with a spotlight on the one in front. They all had long blonde hair with their fingernails and toenails painted white. They were also all wearing belly tops and booty shorts but when Charlie looked more closely he could now see these were not women at all. They were all men. He could also see a man on the same stage sitting on a judge's bench with an auction hammer in his hand whacking it on the table while shouting out loud 30 noodles and 30 tuners for this beautiful supermodel that we have on stage sold to the inmate in the green jumper. The crowd then started cheering as the woman of the wing walked off stage. The winning bidder grabbed the prison woman and said you are coming with me woman. I'm roasting so we are going back to my cell right now to have some fun. He then walked out the auction with the woman of the wing and then the next woman of the wing on stage walked forward into the spotlight and bidding started again. Charlie also noticed all the women of the wing on stage were all crying so he knew none of them wanted to do this. While the auction was running Charlie tapped the shoulder of the black guy standing in front of him. My name is Charlie and I'm new on this wing. What's going on here? Is this real or is this some type of performance or stage play? The guy in front of him laughed while saying you must be new on this wing to ask a silly question like that. My name is Reese and I've been on this wing for the last 10 years so I can tell you what's going on is 100% real. I used to be on the gladiators wing before and that was a nightmare to live on. It was like going to war every time you went out of your cell. The auction wing is very different. We are not allowed to take cheeks on this wing. Everything is sold via the auction. Charlie noticed something very strange about Reese. He noticed that Reese never even turned around while he was talking to him. He was so focused on bidding so he could win one of the girls on stage. He had his eyes locked on the stage the entire time and pretty much didn't even care who he was even talking to. 
After some time had passed there was only one more woman of the wing left because all the other women of the wing were sold and Reese didn't win any of them. He really wanted to win a woman of the wing today so he could take something home to have some fun with later. The last woman of the wing walked into the spotlight on stage and the auction began. The bidding started at two noodles and two tunas and got all the way up to 25 noodles and 25 tunas with Reese being the highest bidder. The man on stage with the auction hammer shouted in the crowd saying, going once, going twice, sold to Mr. Reese. Reese jumped for joy as he finally won a woman today. He shouted saying I am so happy. I haven't won anything in months and I am roasting. The last woman I won was released from prison three months ago and I don't have large amounts of noodles and tuna like some of the other prisoners in here so I haven't been able to win anything else for months but that's okay because today is my lucky day. It was bad news for Reese because Reese's luck was about to run out even before it had begun. The auction door suddenly opened and something walked through the door while looking at the woman of the wing on stage. Charlie was now standing next to what looked like a seven foot tall giant and at this moment Charlie knew he was in trouble because he knew if this guy sees him it's over so he looked away praying the seven foot tall giant wouldn't see him. As Reese was walking to the stage to collect his prize the seven foot tall giant spotted what he was doing so he quickly ran past Reese while pushing the entire crowd out the way. He then jumped on stage and shouted at the crowd saying she's mine, she's all mine, now does anyone have a problem with that? The entire crowd went silent while the man on the stage with the auction hammer got out of his seat and said purple, you can take her, she's all yours. The man on stage then said Reese I will cancel your bids today and give you 10 noodles and 10 tunas extra for the next auction. Purple then grabbed the woman of the wing and picked her up. He then put her in his arms and jumped off the stage with her. He then walked towards the red door with the woman of the wing in his arms while saying, Woman, we are going to have some fun tonight. As Purple was walking the woman shouted saying someone please help me. Purple then said shut up woman and left the room with her. Reese walked back towards Charlie while looking down at the floor feeling sorry for himself until he looked up and saw Charlie's face for the first time. From that moment going forward everything suddenly changed. With a massive smile on his face he said to Charlie was it you who I was talking to all this time? Charlie said yes, it was me. You were too focused on the auction that you never even looked at me to see who you were even talking to. It's okay. I found it rather funny. Reese then said sorry how rude of me. I didn't even look at you to see what you looked like. Reese then put out his hand to shake Charlie's hand. Charlie was now happy to see he was making a new friend but when Reese shook his hand he quickly pulled Charlie's hand towards him and kissed the back of Charlie's hand with his lips. Charlie quickly pulled his hand away while shouting at Reese saying what the heck are you doing? Reese replied saying you are hot. No you are super hot. If only I had known I was speaking to a supermodel like you I never would have bid it on any of the other girls that were on stage. I'm roasting so how about me and you take a trip back to my cell so we can talk. Reese grabbed Charlie's hand and tried to pull him out the room but Charlie held on to the door while shouting get off me, leave me alone, you just won your prize so why don't you go and get it. Reese replied saying that's Purple's girlfriend now and I'm not that strong or stupid to try and step to Purple but you, 
Well that's another story because a woman like you is easy work. Now come with me woman. Charlie was now screaming for his life shouting help. Somebody help me. Reese then shouted at Charlie saying shut up woman. You are making a scene. You are making far too much noise. The man with the auction hammer could now see what was going on so he got up and looked to see what Charlie and Reese was doing. Everyone else in the room then turned around and could also see Charlie for the first time. All the men in the room suddenly went crazy and started whistling at Charlie while telling him how beautiful he was. Reese then said to Charlie with an angry look on his face, Look what you have done woman. You've brought too much attention to us and now everyone else in the room wants to have you too. The spotlight that was on the stage suddenly started to shine over Charlie and Reese. The man with the auction hammer who was on the stage walked towards Reese and slapped him while saying let go of her right now. You know the rules on this wing. Nobody else takes cheeks except for me and purple so you will now be punished for trying to do it. Reese then said I'm sorry, please don't punish me. Purple stole my new girlfriend and I was roasting. I won't do it again I promise. The salesman then said okay this is what we will do. You know those extra noodles and tunas I was going to give you. Well I'm going to hold on to them. Call it a fine or a penalty. The salesman then looked at Charlie and said to him. Are you okay? Did he hurt you? Charlie replied saying I'm okay. The salesman then said to Reese you know the rules on the auction wing. Nobody except Purple and me have the power to take cheeks. Anyone who gets caught doing it gets severely punished. I was going to punish you by putting you up for sale with the girls at the next auction but I got an even better deal. It's better for me to just take back the extra noodles and tuna I was going to give you. I think I will do that instead so Reese you better get out of here before I change my mind. Reese then ran out of the auction room without looking back. The salesman then put out his hand and said my name is the salesman. I am the supreme leader of the auction wing and it's lovely to meet you. The salesman then said if you have any questions feel free to ask me anything or alternatively you can pop into my cell when you are free and we can talk. Take this map of the wing. The gold dot on the map is where my cell is located. Come and say hi anytime. I also want to let you know I already knew you were being moved on to this wing so I told the prison officers to put the present in your cell on your bed after they saw you enter this room. The auction is now closed for today so let me walk you back to your cell. I want to make sure you get there without any other guys trying to hurt you. Charlie was very grateful that the salesman offered to walk him back to his cell so he agreed. While they were walking to Charlie's cell Charlie asked the salesman this question. He said, how did a middle-aged white man like you become the supreme leader of the auction wing and not purple because you don't look that strong and you also don't have huge muscles like purple so how did a normal guy like you become the supreme leader of the auction wing? The salesman giggled while saying it doesn't just take muscles to become a supreme leader of a wing. It also takes intelligence, great leadership skills and the willingness to want to be a supreme leader. Me and Purple have an understanding. I give him unlimited women of the wing. I provide him with as much noodles and tuna as he wants and he lets me run the auction wing. Purple is my personal security guard so no one messes with me. We both agreed to these terms and everyone is happy. Charlie then said aren't you afraid purple will double cross you and then turn you out. The salesman giggled while saying no way. 
me and Purple are friends. We have an understanding so as long as we both understand the deal we will both be fine. You know the auction wing used to be one of the most violent wings in this prison. Even prison officers were afraid to work on this wing because it was just too violent. Inmates were taking dirt naps left right and center. Skinny white boys like you were getting trains ran on them for fun until one day, I joined the wing and everything changed. I got purple on my side and put rules in place that everyone has to follow. After walking for a while they finally got to Charlie's cell. The salesman then said get some sleep Charlie and don't forget to open the present I left you on your bed. Get some rest and we will catch up tomorrow. Charlie then said thank you to the salesman. You are a good man. Also thank you for saving me from Reese. I'm not sure what he would have done to me if he got me alone in his cell. The salesman then said I know exactly what he would have done to you but it doesn't matter now because you are safe. He will never try and hurt you again. Charlie then shook the salesman's hand and went back to his cell. While in his cell laying on his bed Charlie asked himself I wonder what Reese would have done to me if the salesman wasn't there. I think he would have just brought me to my cell and robbed me. Yeah that's what he would have done, he would have only robbed me. Luckily for me I am friends with the leader of the auction wing so it looks like my prison experience will not be so bad after all and with a big smile on his face Charlie went over and opened his present but to his amazement he was totally shocked by what he saw in the box. Inside the box it had makeup, nail polish, lipstick, a blonde wig, a belly top, flip-flops and some booty shorts. Charlie laughed while saying to himself the salesman is a joker. He is playing a trick on me by giving me girls stuff. I will have a laugh with him in the morning about this joke tomorrow. Charlie was now feeling very tired so he put the items back in the box and went to sleep. The next morning he was woken up by loud doors banging and prison officers on the wing shouting the word breakfast, wake up and get your breakfast. Charlie got ready and walked to the canteen to get his breakfast but while he was walking he saw Reese. He then walked up to Reese to ask him a question but Reese ran off saying I'm not allowed to talk to you. I am not about to get into trouble just for you and then be sold as a woman in the next auction. By the time Charlie could reply Reese was gone. Charlie only wanted to ask him a question but Reese was gone before he could even say anything. After getting his breakfast he went back to his cell to eat but as soon as he got to his door the salesman and Purple were at his door waiting for him to arrive. He noticed they both had serious looks on their faces and both of their arms were folded. They both looked like they were ready for war. When Charlie got to the door he said hi to both men but both men blanked him. Once all three men were in Charlie's cell Charlie started smiling to try and break the tension in the room while saying to the salesman that was a funny joke that you played on me yesterday. The salesman and Purple both looked at each other in utter confusion while saying what joke. Charlie replied saying you put women's items in the present that you gave me. It was a funny prank but I'll give you the box back now so you can play that trick on the next person who comes to the wing. With a serious look on his face the salesman slapped Charlie while saying this was no joke woman. The women's items in the box were for you. You will be sold at auction today so get ready now because I want you to look as pretty as you can. Charlie got some courage and told the salesman no. He said I'm not wearing women's clothes and I won't be sold in your silly auction. 
Purple had now had enough of Charlie's moaning. He then walked up to Charlie and grabbed him by each arm and lifted him up in the air. He then started squeezing his muscles while saying women you will listen to the salesman. Purple was so strong it felt like Charlie was being squeezed by a vice. Charlie was now in pain screaming up and down the cell while yelling purple stop please. Please stop. After 5 minutes of squeezing Charlie's muscles, Purple finally stopped and put him down. Charlie was able to stand but both of his arms were dead. Purple had stopped the blood flow in each of Charlie's arms so Charlie was a sitting duck. Charlie looked at Purple who now had a massive smile on his face. He said with a quiet voice, Please Purple, you have won, I give up. Purple continued to smile because he knew he wasn't finished, in fact he was only getting started. He then backhanded Charlie with so much force that Charlie catapulted through the cell hitting the wall with incredible force before falling onto the floor. Charlie felt like he had just been hit by a double-decker bus. He was hurt so bad that he couldn't even get up off the floor. The salesman then shouted at Charlie saying this is what happens to women who won't listen to me. Purple I think you need to teach this woman a lesson, a very special lesson, a lesson she will never ever forget. Purple walked up to Charlie and picked him up by his leg with one hand and threw him on the bed. As Purple started to unzip his trousers Charlie knew what was coming next so he shouted out loud saying prison officers help, guards help, somebody save me. While Charlie was on the bed Purple slapped him again while saying shut up woman. Charlie was now unable to move and was wounded. He felt like Purple had just slapped the life out of him. Purple then pulled down Charlie's pants as he laid on the bed with Charlie unable to move due to the sheer force of Purple's power. With his last bit of strength Charlie said Purple no, don't do this, please Purple don't do this. Purple just looked at him with a sinister look on his face as he got on the bed. Charlie was laying on his belly so Purple put a pillow over the back of his head and then pushed his tings inside of him. Charlie screamed for his life shouting mom please help me. Charlie was laying face first on the bed with Purple on him pounding his cheeks. Charlie could see the salesman sitting in the corner with his tings in his hand and a massive smile on his face. He was really enjoying the view. The salesman had front row seats to the action and was enjoying what Purple was doing to Charlie. Charlie was screaming for his life saying please stop, let me go. Get off of me, let me go man. Purple didn't listen and continued to pound him while shouting take that woman. You are my girlfriend, you are my wife. Take it, take it. Purple continued to pound Charlie's cheeks for one whole hour before shooting his warm cream pie inside of Charlie. Purple then got up and zipped up his trousers. He then walked out the cell laughing while Charlie was left on the bed wounded. The salesman then got off the chair and said I think somebody is in need of a facial. He then walked towards Charlie with his tings in his hand while laughing. He then said I really enjoyed watching purple turn you out. Charlie was laying on his belly unable to move with his head on his side staring at the salesman thinking to himself what is he going to do to me. The salesman then said to Charlie I have another present for you woman so I hope you like it. Charlie was trying to move his body but he was unable to move due to the amount of pain he was in. 
He could now see the salesman's tings right in front of him as the salesman held it in his hands. The salesman then sprayed his warm cream pie all over Charlie's face while laughing. Charlie was trying to move out the way but he was just too wounded to move. He just laid there while his face got caked in cream pie. The salesman sprayed him with so much cream pie it was all over his face while some of it even went in Charlie's eye. He made sure every last drop hit Charlie in the face. He then said, that was so good. Charlie I will leave you to get some rest as you need to be ready for your auction later. I will collect you before the auction starts so make sure you look pretty for me before I arrive. I want you to paint your nails, put the lipstick I got you on, put on the blonde wig and also the belly top and booty shorts. Also don't forget to put on your flip flops. Since you are a woman now you are no longer allowed to wear any forms of shoes. You will wear flip flops from now on. Charlie lifted his head and said please sir, I just can't do this, I can't be a woman of the wing, that's gay. The salesman replied saying okay that's fine, let me go and get purple to come back in the cell for round 2 because you obviously don't understand how serious I am. The salesman was just about to walk out the cell until Charlie said wait, okay I will do it. I will get ready and look pretty for you in your auction today. Please just don't call purple again, I'm still sore. The salesman then started smiling while saying that's a good girl, at least you came around in the end. They all come around sooner or later, I'll see you later woman. The salesman then laughed as he walked out the cell while slamming the door shut. Charlie was now traumatized by this experience as he laid on his bed in severe pain. He never knew that people actually get turned out in prison. The worst part about it was the fact that it also happened to him. He just felt so weak, so helpless and powerless to stop the men from turning him out. With no other options he got up out of his bed and pressed the cell emergency button to call a prison officer over. He wanted to tell the prison officers what Purple and the salesman did to him. He thought by telling the officers what Purple and the salesman did to him they might have a heart and save him from ever getting turned out again. After two hours of waiting Charlie's cell door opened. A prison officer walked in and saw Charlie laying on the bed with his pants still down and his face still caked in cream pie. He then said to Charlie. You rang the emergency buzzer so tell me what you want and be quick because I'm watching a movie in the office. I had to pause my movie and walk all this way to your cell just to check what's going on so tell me what you want and be quick because I don't have all day. Charlie then said to the officer I've been turned out in prison. Purple was the one that turned me out and when he was finished the salesman took out his tings and sprayed his cream pie all over my face. Just look at my face it's caked with cream pie. I didn't wash it off because I wanted to show you as proof so you know it 100% happened. Unable to keep a straight face the officer started laughing while asking Charlie if he enjoyed it. Charlie replied saying no I didn't. I didn't want to do it. They made me do it. Please help me because they are planning to auction me off today. The conversation then took a sudden turn for the worst. Instead of the prison officer helping Charlie the officer started to try and chat him up by saying things like, You are hot. You are so pretty. I will help you and protect you so no man will ever try to harm you ever again. You should be my girlfriend so I can take care of you. You help me out and I'll help you out. I will protect you from purple and the salesman. You can trust me. I'm a prison officer. 
Just quickly suck my tings as payment and I will be your full-time personal bodyguard. No one will be able to hurt you again. Charlie was shocked by what the prison officer wanted him to do but with no other option he got on his hands and knees and begged the prison officer to just help him without him having to suck the officer's tings as payment but the officer laughed and said do you really think I'm going to risk my life and help you for nothing in return. The prison officer then said woman, they don't pay me enough to do that so since you won't suck my things I'm gone, good luck trying to fight off purple again. The officer walked out the cell while laughing, Charlie then started to panic and get flashbacks of purple clapping his cheeks so he quickly got off the bed and ran out the cell while shouting at the officer to come back. He then said to the prison officer, Okay, I'll do it. I'll suck your tings. Please come back. The prison officer then turned around with a massive smile on his face and started to walk back into Charlie's cell. Once he got in the cell he told Charlie to wash all the cream pie off his face which he did. Charlie then put a pillow on the floor and then got on his knees. The officer took out his tings and Charlie put it in his mouth and started sucking it. Charlie couldn't believe what he was doing. He was actually sucking the officer's tings. He could tell the prison officer was really enjoying it because he looked up and saw his eyes roll back. Charlie continued to suck the officer's tings for 10 minutes before the prison officer sprayed his cream pie inside of Charlie's mouth and all over his face. After the officer was finished Charlie spat the officer's cream pie out of his mouth and onto the cell floor. The prison officer then started laughing while saying you should have swallowed it woman. I heard it's very good for you. Charlie's face was also caked with more cream pie than before. The prison officer continued to laugh while saying girl you are pretty good at this. Charlie was so ashamed of what he had just done but didn't feel he had a choice so he asked the prison officer if he could start protecting him starting from today just in case Purple and the salesman came back into his cell. The prison officer's whole mood changed from being friendly to now being very serious. He then said to Charlie you need to suck my tings a few more times and also let me clap your cheeks before I make my final decision. I need more time to experience you before I decide if I'm going to help you or not. Remember I am putting my life on the line to save you so let's just do it a few more times before I make my final decision. Charlie couldn't believe what the prison officer was saying. He then said, I just spent the last 10 minutes sucking your tings because you said you would help me but once I finished doing it you now tell me I need to suck your tings even more before you make your final decision. Get out of my cell. You had no intentions of ever helping me in the first place. The prison officer then zipped up his pants and walked out of Charlie's cell laughing. Charlie was now even more lost with no one to call for help. He just laid in his bed and cried himself to sleep. Hours later Charlie's cell door opened and it was the same prison officer as before. The same one whose tings he sucked but he wasn't there alone. After he opened Charlie's cell door the salesman and Purple walked in the cell. The salesman could see Charlie wasn't even dressed so he slapped him while saying the auction starts soon so you better get ready now. Also don't forget to put on your makeup because we need you to look even more pretty for the men. Charlie felt like he was in a horrible nightmare because he never thought prison would be like this. 
He was now a broken man and finally accepted the fact that there was nothing he could do to stop them from auctioning him off to the highest bidder so he just accepted his fate and followed their orders by getting ready. He put the blonde wig on, did his makeup as best as he could, painted his fingernails and toenails, put on his belly top, booty shorts and then he put on his flip flops. Once Charlie was finished the salesman said to Charlie, Wow, you really are a beautiful looking supermodel, you look amazing woman. Charlie then walked with the salesman and Purple towards the auction room. Once Charlie walked through the door all the men couldn't stop staring at him while saying things like she's hot. She is a beautiful supermodel. Charlie got to the front of the stage and saw five other new white women on stage who were all crying. They were all saying I don't want to be here. I don't want to do this. Charlie had never seen these guys on the wing before so he knew they must be all new recruits. The salesman got up on the bench and sat on his seat. He then shouted at the crowd saying, we have six new girls to be auctioned off today so I hope you have your noodles and tunas ready for payment. He then picked up the auction hammer and slammed it down while saying ladies and gentlemen let the auction begin. The crowd started to cheer as the first woman went on stage. Charlie was the last woman of the wing to be sold so after an hour had passed all the women apart from Charlie were now sold and it was time for Charlie to move into the spotlight to be sold. The salesman introduced Charlie to the crowd by saying, introducing Charlie to the stage but you can call her whatever you like. She's got 36 more years left on her so you've got plenty of time to fulfill your wildest fantasies with her. Let's start the first bid at 5 noodles and 5 tunas but then something strange happened. A man in the crowd shouted saying I'll give you 50 noodles and 50 tunas for her. The whole crowd was shocked because nobody makes bids like that this early on in the auction. The man walked forward and Charlie could now see who it was. He was really shocked because it was Reese. The salesman then said do we have any more bids? Going once, going twice. Sold to Mr. Reese. Reese quickly ran to the stage and paid the salesman. He then grabbed Charlie by the hand and walked out the auction with him while saying woman you belong to me now. I'm taking you back to my cell for some deep pounding. By this time Charlie had now lost all his confidence and was a broken man so he just walked out the auction with Reese and went back to his cell. He never even tried to run or argue. He just accepted the fact that he was a woman of the wing so these are the sort of things he will now have to do. Once in the cell Reese pushed Charlie onto the bed while saying woman I've been waiting for this moment since the first time I locked eyes on you. Charlie replied saying please don't do this. I don't want it. Please just let me go. Reese then got angry and backhanded Charlie while saying I heard what happened. You let purple turn you out. You let the salesman cream pie your face. You sucked an officer's tings and he also cream pied your face. You let all of those men do it so that means I am allowed to do it too. Charlie then replied saying I didn't let them, they just took it. Reese then backhanded him again saying I don't care now pull your pants down and bend over, not wanting to get another slap. Charlie just did what Reese wanted. Reese then got on the bed and got his tings out. He then pushed his tings inside of Charlie and then started to clap his cheeks. Charlie was screaming saying Reese stop, please stop but Reese wouldn't stop. Reese shouted at Charlie saying shut up woman and take it, take it woman, take it. 
Reese kept going for 20 minutes before shooting his cream pie inside of Charlie. Reese then started smiling as he said to Charlie, Girl that was sweet. You will make me some noodles with tuna when I wake up and tomorrow you will do my washing, my ironing and fold all of my clothes. Reese then laid on the bed and within 30 seconds he fell asleep. Charlie got up off the bed and went to do a number two. As he was doing it he could feel Reese's cream pie dripping out of him. As he sat crying with no one to turn to for help. He thought to himself, I was raised in a nice house and I came from a rich family so why was I so stupid to start committing crime just to impress a low quality woman who loves to date criminals. I had my whole life ahead of me and I screwed it all up. Why just why did I do it? I should have just walked away. Now I have to spend the next 36 years in prison trying to escape booty bandits. I never thought things like this happened to men in prison and I can't believe it happened to me. I can't believe I screwed my life up. I just want to go home. I can't believe I sucked multiple men's tings. I can't believe I got turned out in prison.